Understanding how and when to use the brakes on your truck is critical to your safety and to the safety of others around you. If Rogel Medeiros, the driver that caused the 2019 accident in Denver that killed four people, had had a better understanding of how and when to use those brakes, four people wouldn't have been killed and Rogel wouldn't be in jail today. This video is sponsored by GP Transco. Five axle semi trucks have brakes on all axles. They've got brakes on the steering axle, on both drive axles, and on both trailer axles, and they've got an engine brake on the engine underneath the hood. The whole object of the game is to give the truck as much braking power as possible, yet still keep the truck and trailer straight in all braking application. We're going to look at three of the most common examples of when a truck driver would need to use his brakes. Descending a mountain grade. My preferred method is to leave the top of the grade very slowly, put the jake on full, and let the jake do most of the work taking the truck down the hill. I'll use the brake pedal intermittently as I travel down to control the revs, but I use it intermittently because I want those brake pads to cool in between applications. Truck drivers get into trouble with overheated brakes if they stand on the brake pedal and just ride it all the way down. You want to use the brake pedal intermittently to let the brake cool between applications. Let those pads cool between applications. I run it all the way down to the bottom with the jake using the pedal intermittently and I never ever use just the trailer brakes alone because that's too much heat and too much pressure on too few brake pads and that's how guys get into trouble and smoke their brakes. In this clip, you can see Rogel Medeiros, the truck driver that caused the Denver accident, has completely lost control of his vehicle as he weaves down the hill. He's burned out his brakes. He will continue to the bottom and run into stop traffic at the bottom of the hill, killing four people. If Rogel Medeiros had had a better understanding of how and when to use his brakes, he may not have found himself in this situation. Approaching a curve. Now professional drivers are paying attention to what's ahead of them on the road and they see curves coming up. So to handle a curve properly, you need to do the majority of your braking before you enter the curve. Use the jake brake, use the pedal brakes, and slow the vehicle down before you enter the curve. Now if you enter the curve and you find you still got a little too much speed, rely on the jake, use as little brake pressure as possible, ease the truck around the corner, but concentrate on the steering and focus on where you're going. Vehicles that enter a corner too fast, and particularly if they're top heavy, will run into trouble and have an accident almost every time. Control your speed into the curve and around the curve and you'll be all right. And again, never ever in a situation like this when the truck is out of shape, because when you're in a curve, the trailer is not exactly behind the tractor. Never ever just use your trailer brakes because you've got all that trailer weight pushing the tractor. The tractor is not directly in front of it. You can push yourself right out of shape and jackknife. Never use the trailer brakes entering a curve. This video is about braking safety and it's a good time to stress how important it is for drivers to work for a good carrier that has safety in mind and maintains their equipment and their brakes meticulously. GP Transco has recently won an award from Freight Waves on Best Carrier Safety. They've also won an award from Energage as a top workplace to work for in 2023. Energage is a company that pulls employees to get their results. GP Transco just keeps getting better and better every day. It, it's damn impressive. Check them out at gptransco.com. Panic Stopping. Now, nobody ever likes to get into a panic stop situation, but sooner or later, it may happen to you. When it does happen to you, hopefully, it'll be on dry pavement. So on dry pavement, in a panic stop, all you can do is hammer on the brake pedal, shove in the clutch if you've got one, you can pull down the trailer brake if it makes you feel any better, it may help and it may not, and all you can do is concentrate on your steering, keep the truck straight, and try not to slam into whatever is cutting you off. Now on slippery pavement, your options are a little less limited. You've got to be careful as you slow the vehicle down, but chances are if it's wet or slippery pavement, you may nail the car anyway or whatever it is that's cut you off. 
In this situation, a dash cam is your best defense. Now I have seen some of the newer trucks coming off the line right from the manufacturer and they have no trailer brake stick at all. And perhaps this is because a lot of carriers have simply decided that the trailer brake arm itself or the handle creates more problems than it solves. So they're eliminating that altogether. Now I wanted to stress trailer brakes and their use because I get all sorts of comments and questions from guys, especially new guys, wondering how and when to use the trailer brake. And it's, it's virtually never. When I think back on when I would use the trailer brake, the only time I remember ever using it was if I was in a parking lot sliding my axles. But other than that, I, I never touched it. I kept my hands right off it altogether. In 1994, they manufactured auto slack adjusters on all new vehicles being built. And in 1997, they mandated ABS or anti-lock braking systems for trucks and trailers from that date forward. And the whole object of the game was to keep the vehicle straight when it was braking. So the driver didn't have to worry about it so much. It was more controlled electronically and mechanically. The problem with this, however, is though that you and I all both know that mechanical and electrical stuff sometimes breaks down or fails. So you've got to have the trailer and truck maintained by a professional mechanic. Don't rely on it yourself. Have it checked thoroughly and regularly by a licensed mechanic. Truck drivers, by law now, are not allowed to adjust their own brakes. And this is probably a good thing when you think about it, because frankly, what truck driver these days wants to inherit the liability of having brake issues on the truck and the trailer? That's something that drivers should be happy to stay away from and, and let someone else be responsible for that area. In recent years, truck manufacturers are building trucks with air disc brakes. And I think this is a great step forward in truck technology. Air disc brakes are simple to maintain, they're simple to operate, and best of all, during a visual inspection, doing your circle check on the truck, a driver can look at a disc brake but not be able to tell if it's out of whack or not. This puts more of the responsibility on the owners of the trucks and the trailers to keep the brakes maintained because the driver simply cannot tell by looking at them during a circle check. Air disc brakes can stop a truck 20 to 25 percent more quickly than the old standard drum brakes. Part of the problem with the old style brake systems before they got into air disc brakes was a circle check required a driver to literally get underneath the trailer and truck and check the brakes every day. Now, this wasn't always practical, especially if you lived up north here in Canada, where there's snow and ice and crap on the ground half the year. And a lot of guys, if they're with a carrier that are swapping trailers two or three or four times a day, it's just not practical to crawl underneath the truck. You're supposed to do it, but lots of guys skip it. I had a friend of mine that was swapping trailers. It was the third trailer for the day. He headed north on dry pavement. He got cut off, he got into a, a panic stop situation, he jammed on the brakes, the tractor brakes held just fine. The trailer brakes didn't grab at all. The trailer came around, smacked the truck and he jackknifed. The car that had caused the accident in the first place, of course he took right off. So the cops came and looked at the situation and understood exactly what had happened. But the company, the carrier that my friend worked for, charged him with the damages because they said that he hadn't done a proper circle check or he'd have known that those brakes weren't working properly. And that's something that no truck driver needs to be accused of. At the end of the day, it takes a lot of skill to be able to operate a truck and trailer successfully. All sorts of hacks can make it go forward, but being able to stop the thing in all sorts of different weather conditions and road conditions is a skill. It's a highly developed skill. And it burns my britches when I hear people say that truck driving is a low skill, low paid job because it isn't. And they've obviously never driven a truck before. They have no idea what's involved in controlling one of these vehicles. It is highly important to make sure you've got control of the truck at all points. Only the professional drivers have the skill and the training and the knowledge to be able to do this successfully every day. Stay safe, keep the rubber side down, and I'll see you on the backhaul.